you mentioned it there, there's a huge turnover. Um, like, I was shocked when uh, I heard there, there was, I think, was it four of the starting team from last year that were on the panel this year? Uh, and that's a massive turnover. Mm. Like, back home, where you're so used to, uh, there might be like four or five changes on the team. This, there was over 10 players, 10 new players. So it's, uh, it is difficult in that sense. Yeah, for sure. And I'd imagine the post-mortem of something like this is quite unusual because of the reasons you mentioned there and that main reason that you're going to have essentially a new team next year, but also because of the fact that there's such a long gap. I mean, like if you get knocked out of the championship early, I guess people have to say, well, we've got to wait till the Oberon Cup or whatever until next January. But for you guys, it's literally 12 months. <laughs> yeah, that's like a lot of people have been saying it. It's the, there's no competitive games. Mm. No competitive games. Uh, like when Carfine came out, uh, we were uh, oh, we were delighted. Like that, that helped us so much. Because um, you can only do so much in playing uh, A versus Bs. Mm. Uh, like you're playing against the same guys the whole time. And then having like all Iron champions come out. Um, I know it was a holiday for them, but they did, like they gave it everything when they played us. And like, can't thank them enough for what they did for us. Yeah, it, it seems that the appetite is never going to be an issue when it comes to New York GEA. There's been people who always moot this idea that potentially New York should be inserted into the National League, and obviously there's logistical issues with that as well, but if you look at that Curra Finn match you mentioned there, like there was a huge hype around New York, I understand, for that, a challenge game. It was, uh, yeah, I think um, over the last few years where New York have been so close, in uh, basically pulling off a big upset. Um, it's just getting closer and closer. Like It will happen eventually. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, there is that anticipation from everyone out here. Like um, I was constantly getting phone calls the last few weeks. Uh, Tom, like, how are you doing? Uh, is such a player playing? Is that player playing? How are you doing in training? Like There's a lot of people that expect they're expecting us to pull an offset, uh, pull uh, an upset uh, in the not too distant future. This year now was very professional. Like the guys were, the management did. They tried to go that extra mile. They were doing different things. Like say, I know in the past where just talking to different guys, the training it wasn't really those guys missing training the whole time. It was definitely different now the last couple of years. So just in terms of clamping down on people who are missing training sessions and kind of getting a camp into kind of a, a team mentality, is it in the weeks leading up to the game? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like training, <laughs> training was very tough. Uh, like people think it's uh, it's soft coming over here, uh, but training was tough, and I think that's what guys loved. They loved that challenge to be able to go through that tough training. Uh, like guys. It's normal to work 50, 60 hours a week over here. And then to be able to train in the evenings, it's, uh, it is a bit of a challenge. Mm. Taking all that into account, Tom, do you reckon that you're near the peak now that this, we've all said, is the best New York team we've seen and obviously as close as New York have come to winning that championship match? Do you feel that this is the peak or is there a few more steps to come before you actually reach that summit and getting your hands on that victory? It's... Um well, like say if I, any game that I play in, uh, and it's the same with the players as well, they, uh, you have to have belief that you want to win every game. Even though, like, you know, like say the opposition is a superior team, um, you always have that belief that you want to win. Like we were, we were fully expecting to win. Um, it's, uh, the problem is it's going to be a huge turnover again next year. Like, we don't even know what players are going to be hiding around. Um, so it is it is a bit of a mystery. So I, it's hard to say if we're at, at our peak. Um, this is just one year. It's going to be completely different next year. Of course it is. Like There will, of course, be a huge amount of people outgoing going back to Ireland. But I guess New York can, to a certain extent, control who comes in. As in, I wouldn't necessarily say going to poach players from Ireland, but there's always players in Ireland who are looking for opportunity elsewhere, looking to see a different part of the world. And it is offering those people an opportunity, which is where New York GEA comes in. And they can do that very effectively. Yeah, no, it isn't. It's uh, like a lot of lads, they want to come out here for a bit of a holiday. Um, like the... The winter time over here it is very cold, 
I think uh, it was one day it was minus 17 degrees. So they do work very hard from if they do come out early. And then the summer, it is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it, um, yeah, no, just guys like to travel. Um, and um, if, like, say, the management or if guys out here in New York, if they hear guys want to go traveling, oh, yeah, 100% they'll call them. For anybody at home who's thinking about potentially moving over to New York next year who want to see a little part of the world, I presume you're somebody who's a big advocate of it that will give it the two thumbs up and say, definitely go for it? I definitely think everyone is different. Like, I, I wasn't even supposed to be in New York. I was supposed to go to Australia. Mm. Had everything planned, and then uh, I got a phone call saying, hey, listen, Tom, when you come over and play a bit of football? And I said, oh, I have no interest in playing the football anymore. And uh, I said, just come out for the summer. After about, I uh, came out with one of my uh, club mates from back home, and after about, I think it was a two or three weeks, we said, uh, we better apply for our visa. Do you ever wish that you made the move sooner? Uh, no. No. I, uh, <laughs> I had a good time with, uh, had a good time back home with Mayo and uh, with my club. Uh, no, no. No regrets at all. The, the reason why I asked that is just because I, I was reading an article in the Mayo News from around 2011, I think, and I, I think you made a, a statistical comment about something like 90% of your civil engineering course had emigrated by the, the year 2011, obviously just after the height of the recession. So <coughs> pre- presumably it was football, which was the main thing keeping you in Ireland. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's, uh, sure, you know yourself, it's a religion back home. Mm. It's, hard to, it's hard to leave it. Um, but yeah, no, about, yeah, over 90% of my class, a lot of them, they're all down in Australia, a few in uh, the UK, a lot of them are here in New York, it's, um, there's just so many opportunities um, outside of Ireland, but I am here back home, it is getting a lot better. Mm. Yeah, well, the, the boom is back, as they say, but it's back in the cities at this point, and of course it's going to reach the rest of the country, but I, I'm sure even... Back in those days when 90% of your classmates had emigrated and you're still having a very, very successful inter-county career, there must have been part of you that was thinking, right, I, I wonder, is, is this the right decision I'm making here by staying just for the football? Or, or were you fully convinced that this is all going to be worth it? It was, um, like I said, it's hard to leave the football. Mm. Like it's, um, like back home, uh, not even just Mayo, but just people, the Gaelic, the football, it's it's a religion. There's just so much passion, and then uh, I know some people are giving out about the way the football has been played, but you get so many great games during the year. It's um, it, like I've been showing, um, I've been talking to people over here in New York and Americans who have never seen the game before, and uh, you show them clips, and they're just in awe of the sport. They uh, they think it, they think we're crazy. They think the hurlers are crazy anyway with the sticks. Mm. <laughs> um, just, just briefly before we move on to Sunday's game like, what's the thing you miss most about being a Mayo footballer and do you think we'll see you in, in the red and green again oh no no <laughs> I don't have it in the legs anymore <laughs> it's um, just it's uh, it's, a, it's a challenge like it's um, li- li- like life is very difficult sometimes when I look at these, uh, like say, I brought it up before, triathletes, bring up uh, marathon runners, I always say to myself, why the hell do they do it? It's, um, it just makes no sense, but it's all about the challenge. Like back home, playing with Mayo, playing with my club, it was, the train was very difficult, but it was, once you got through that, it was, it was a great feeling knowing that you were able to do that, um, that you were able to compete against other people. It was, um, yeah, it was the challenge that was enjoyable. Mm. And presumably it all comes to be, comes to fruition and it's all worth it on a weekend like this. May 13th has been a date that's been in all of our diaries, even from a neutral perspective, since the very start of the year. It's a huge game in McHale Park, one that somebody like yourself, I'm sure, has uh, enjoyed playing in. And, and as we've just mentioned there, it's when all the training is worth it. What's your thoughts about this game? I mean, Galway have almost got an upper hand in this rivalry over the past couple of years. But again, what we've seen with Mayo over the last two, three years is that you can never write them off. But, as I just said, it's early in the year. Is it too early in the year for Mayo? It's, um... <laughs> this is a difficult one. Difficult one. Mayo and Galway. It doesn't matter who's in form, who's not playing well. It's always a flip of a coin. Mm. 
the rivalry between Mayo and Galway, it's always... Um, I know Galway do have had... Uh, they've had the upper hand on us now the last few years, but it's been right there. It's been so close every year. Um, I think it's going to be the same this weekend. Obviously, Lee Keegan out is a massive loss. It's going to be close. <laughs> it's going to be close. It's... Uh, no, obviously, I definitely want Mayo to win. Um, I just, honestly, it's going to be a flip of the coin. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Let's hope it'll go right the way down to the, to the wire anyway in the 70 minutes. Listen, Tom Kniff, it was great to chat to you. Uh, all the best with life in New York and uh, hopefully see you back in these shores very shortly. Tom Kniff, New York captain. Thanks a million. No problem. Thank you.